Creating flexible groups. There's many ways and purposes for creating groups within a classroom. But it, when we think about flexible grouping, we might do it on what kind of product the group would like to produce. So after you teach whatever the content is, maybe you want students to create a product and then they can work in flexible groups deciding what they want to design, build, make to show that what they learned. These are a few of my favorite Web 2.0 tools. We've covered some of these in other lessons, but we want flexibility. When we're getting kids college and career ready, we don't have to tell them always what the end product is. We can tell them what your expectations are, and then they can pick the appropriate tool to demonstrate what they have learned. So when we think about flexible grouping, that's how I want us to think about that during this segment. Now, everything is about higher order thinking skills. This is Benjamin Bloom. This is higher order thinking skills. It still is very rele relevant today, but Andrew Churches in New Zealand rewrote it, rebuilt it based on technology. And there's all different things that we can be doing. We've covered a lot of these from blogging to podcasting to creating media. But we have to think about this is the, the bottom, the remembering. This is just finding stuff, social bookmarking, uh, learning to search. That's the bottom where we really want students to be is up here in the designing, building, production, construction. And as we've looked at different lessons, we've covered many of these things. So now we're going to talk more about student choice. So they know how to do all these things, the podcasting, the broadcasting, and then they get to pick what they want. I love this, Bloom's Taxonomy for iPads. This is um, the same thing, kind of the, from the remembering up to the creating, but there are different apps that you can use if you are in an iPad world. This is one of my favorite sites, Wordle. Wordle.net is a site that you can make tag clouds. It works great on everything but an iPad because it does use Flash. And this is made by my friend um, Jen Wagner, and she does a Guess the Wordle every day. So if you want to go see her Guess the Wordles, put in Guess the Wordle and you'll get to them. So this one is a Guess the Wordle of Mount St. Helens. Here are some political speeches done in Wordle. This is President Obama's first inaugural speech, and you can see the themes come up. He said nation more than he said world or, or new. Now, this is President Bush's speech from 2005, and you sure see a theme there. You see freedom very clearly. This is Bill Clinton's second inaugural speech. Hard to see against the black, but new is large and century is large compared to some other words in the speech. Now, Ronald Reagan sure is a theme right there. This is his first inaugural speech. And the way this was done is just the speech was copied, pasted in Wordle, and Wordle takes out the words like of and the, and then you can go ahead and play with fonts and do all that other stuff. Um, be, be careful with this black background. I don't want you to hit print and uh, go through all the ink in the entire building. Now, can you imagine we go all the way back to President Abraham Lincoln? This is his first. So study this for a minute. Some of the themes, Constitution, Union, States, Government. Okay, that's the first. Now take a look at the second. This is Lincoln's second. Wow. Look at that. You really have words popping out and really says a lot about where our, our country was at the time. Google Earth. There is so much we can do in Google Earth, but be a little careful. Don't have more than one group working on Google Earth at one time. It just demands so many network resources that it is um, difficult to have more than one group on there at a time. You have lots you can turn on and turn off in the left, but you can take and create tours within Google Earth. If you look up at the top left corner, there's a little push pin. You can put little push pins in and create a tour around the world. Uh, you can turn on, this one happens to have the latitude and longitude turned on, and you can drill all the way down to specific places to get the latitude and longitude. That's a whole lot more interesting than doing a worksheet on latitude and longitude. You can go take students to places they may never be able to go visit 
um, personally, and here is the Grand Canyon. I, th I just wanted to show you that some parts have been kind of blocked off, and including the roof of um, some buildings. This is a great site made by teachers for teachers called Google Lit Trips. All different stories from pre-K all the way up to high school are different novels that teachers have made tours, in, and they call them Lit Trips. So they follow along where the story goes. So your students, if you are doing something with geography or if the book talks about a setting, they could make a lit trip to match their story to show what they learned about the topic. Here's an example of one. And this one is from the book, My Brother Sam is Dead. And it, you can see that you can put in the place marks. You could put in different um, symbols and words and you can embed uh, any videos that you can find online you can paste in images that you find online and you can also type text so it's a great way to summarize something now if you can have access to Google Earth because that's software that needs to be downloaded and installed you can go ahead and use Google Maps and that's a lot nicer on the network it just doesn't it's not as big it's not a hog like Google Earth this is fun, scribble maps. You can go ahead and make your own scribble maps where students could, very similar to what they did in Google Earth, they can now scribble on top of a map, noting different places, um, depending on what maybe their story was about. Discovery United Streaming, which is now called Discovery Streaming, has so many things that students can go in and explore and look around. Um, it's done by the Discovery Channel, so it's safe appropriate things for students to go look around. You also, with your license, most of the videos can be downloaded and used in student projects. Just a, the ones that can't are clearly labeled, but almost everything in their collection, they can be taken out and then they can be used to mash up some of your media. Google SketchUp, one of my all-time favorites is no longer Google SketchUp, it's Trimble SketchUp. But what it is is 3D modeling software for everybody that doesn't know CAD, which is great. You can just come in here and um, create your objects. They have a warehouse. You can create your house, and then you can go into the warehouse and get your trees, get your plants, uh, whatever you want. There's all different things made by other people that you can bring in and use in your models. Love, love, love this. You can also make comics. There's I couldn't even guess how many online comic generators and they're hard because you really have you only have so many characters and you have to get your your point across and so this is one that I use there's a lot of apps if you have access to iPads there's a lot of apps and another one piece of software I love is called comic life now there what, what kids love about it is it's very you know you you are getting a lot of information in there but doesn't feel like you're writing a you know a big paper. This is new. Start a new flyer. This is s'more, and it just is look it has a fresh look and feel. Not the same backgrounds and templates that we see everywhere. So you become a user of s'more, and then you can go ahead and create use their templates to create beautiful signs. This is a site you can use to edit images, music, um, audio. Do some screen capture and very easy again for students to use. So they want to produce different things based on what you've covered and they can have all different types of products. We want student choice and we want flexible groups. Just because they were in the same group this morning doesn't mean they have to be in the, the same group tomorrow. So create flexible groups and let them decide on their products. Thanks.